So guys what if Naruto WWAS ninjutsu in a world of devils and dragons in high school DXD Naruto X harem movie. Naruto sat on a bench at the front of Kuo Academy, watching as some of the early arrivers filed in for school, ever since that war, had preferred to wake up early, don't ask him why, since he had absolutely no idea whatsoever, probably involved shinobi training, anyways, he was fairly zoned out, wondering when the day was going to be over, he hated school and learning with a passion, and it was Friday, so all he could think about was the weekend. He was surprised when he heard a loud slam on the bench next to him, a book? Why had someone slammed a book on there? He turned towards the newcomer. Instantly recognizing her, along with Rias Gremory, the perverted trio, and Kiba Yudo, she was likely the most well-known of the school, short, small build, cat-like hazel eyes, and striking white hair. Naruto knew she was a first year in the mascot for the school, called so because of her tendency to say NYA like a cat and her appearance, her name was Kaneko Tiju, and he was blatantly confused as to why she was there. Explain, her voice was dark, expectant, she gestured to the book next to him, Naruto's eyes followed her finger until he saw the familiar orange cover of the book, upon closer inspection, the words Will of Fire, Volume 2 of the Menma series, were written on the front. Uh, Kaneko san that's my book, he answered dumbly, as in, I wrote it, says my name right here, he pointed at it, honestly, was being an accomplished author at the age of 18 such a crime? What do you know of Chakra? See Chakra? He was caught off guard by the ferocity of her voice, she always seemed so tame and distant, looking at her stony, cold, and expectant face, he knew he had to pull some answer out of his ass, it's a completely fictional thing. She leaned closer to his ear, you and I both know that isn't true. E-H-H. He wasn't prepared for this. He was just working on settling down and finding a purpose, not playing 20 questions with some freaky fangirl. I have no idea what you mean by that, he replied, acting as serious as he could, surprisingly, even after war, he couldn't be grave in an everyday conversation. Your book, it mentions Senjutsu, what do you know? She sure was forceful about the topic, in a daze, he couldn't really think of anything else to say. I, uh, have to go to class, bye. He deftly wormed out of her grip and took it towards the building, only instead of going inside, he took a right and went around the corner. It'll make him tell me the truth. Kaneko decided, running after him at a speed no human should be able to keep up for long, luckily, not many people were there and they weren't paying attention to the situation. When she rounded the corner of the building, expecting to find Naruto, he was gone, he ran as fast just as any normal human, he should be here, how did he disappear? Leaving a baffled Kaneko in his wake, Naruto breathed a sigh of relief from the roof of the school, it was an easy matter to jump and run up the wall once he was out of view. Strange, he thought absently, when she was close to me. I swear I sensed a decent amount of chakra and trace remembrance of senjutsu. I need to get some more sleep, the problem was that he doubted it was the lack of sleep causing his readings to be off, for one, he was an awful censor, but he was always right when the other person was that close and didn't have their power sealed, I guess this means I have to get to the bottom of it, he sighed, and here I thought I had a chance to be a normal human in a dull world, caring only about, nothing really. Damn it all. Why was he so curious? That wasn't the end of the insanity. Imagine how much Naruto freaked out when a completely perverted idiot and member of the infamous perverted trio got a girlfriend, ridiculous, right? No. The rumors didn't lie, and they explained why Issei Hyodo was so happy and zoned out that day, seriously. How did that kid manage a girl as hot as had heard? and all he got was some PTSD and a complete lack of tact with all women. Is something the matter, Uzumaki-san? A teacher, right, he was in chemistry class, he swear that Kyoto-sensei's words merged together to create some incoherent, forgan blabber that could have put Shikamaru to sleep in seconds, scratch that, anything could have put the genius to sleep in seconds, but you get the point. Yes. I mean no. Uh, sensei, Naruto added, you may be an accomplished author, but that means nothing in the world of chemistry, if you were listening, please explain, he tuned the guy out right there, letting some other, smarter, person answer his question while pretending to take notes, in a few minutes, his paper was covered in a bunch of stupid seals that had no real purpose other than to see what else he could do to defy the laws of physics, fuenjutsu was notes. Just for a completely different topic. Ever since Jiraiya gave him a scroll on it for his 15th birthday with a bunch of notes and books on it, had been studying the tedious art that is fuenjutsu. Seals to lighten things, seals to seal things, duh. Seals to blow up things, seals to, you get the point. Fuenjutsu was a cool and versatile thing to use, allowing him to seal his unwanted homework papers in a self-destruct seal that practically oozed satisfaction when it exploded, 
During his time in the elemental countries, he wasn't a huge fan of using seals, but after seeing his father and the Naidem Hokage fight Obito, he knew he had to be let in on their secret, and there it was, staring him in the face with all the books Jiraiya gave him, and he was only adept at the art. Curse studying. He just had to work harder. He glanced over class 2C, noticing how a few were staring out the window, while someone in the class had fixed him with an odd look, Kiba Yuto, the so-called Prince of Kuo, was watching him curiously. Naruto remembered that he was part of some creepy research club with Rias Gremory, Akano Himejima, and, wait, Kaneko was in there too, wasn't she? What did their club have against him? Naruto narrowed his eyes at Kiba, noting how different he was from Kiba Inazuka, blonde hair, polished face, they were practically opposites in terms of that, hey, if they try anything funny, I'll put a balloon full of orange paint right above the club door, classic. Maybe I can make a motion activated seal to spray really strong axe spray all over the room. Noticing the hard, then slightly diabolical look that Naruto was giving him, Kiba turned back to the board, which was full of a book of equations involving acids and bases. The rest of the day went by as normal, only Naruto tried to draw as little attention as possible to himself, thankfully, he only had to give out one autograph to a really persistent fan, and apart from that most people left him alone it still didn't help the feeling that Kaneko and the rest of the club were hiding something. Whatever it was, he was going to find out, after school at the occult research club Rias Gremory sat on a dresser, her legs crossed in a bored fashion as she skimmed through a book, a particular orange-colored book written by none other than Naruto Uzumaki. Finally, the club's president gave the book back to Kaneko, I don't see what's so unusual about this, seems like legitimate fiction to me, Rias Gremory had long red hair, at least D cup assets, and striking blue eyes, at Kuo, she was every mon's dream, but here she was simply Bucko, only those two were at the club, the next two were going to arrive in a few minutes. No one without knowledge of chakra or senjutsu could have understood it so well, Kaneko returned, dislike evident when she nearly spat out the word senjutsu. Oh, it's fine, Rias said, he could have found it online, I am sure there is some rumor of chakra somewhere, and he feels completely human and powerless too. Kaneko looked down, no, he is stronger than he seems. She did feel stupid for losing her cool and overeating though, but Rias couldn't blame her, after all, Senjutsu had ruined her family, so it was only right she found a book that revolved around Chakra and Senjutsu so taboo, even though the latter was only mentioned a few times in passing, the freshman was able to decipher that the author knew of some form or another of Senjutsu, personally or not, then there was Chakra, an entire fictional world based off of Chakra, how ridiculous. The so-called shinobi could even walk up walls, an idea she never thought of before, insanity, the lot of it. Maybe we should watch him along with Hyodo, Rias finally answered, someone who has potential knowledge of chakra and senjutsu could help you out, right Kaneko? The Neko show nodded, the door creaked open and in walked another woman, her name was Akano Himejima, and she was just as pleasing to the eyes as Rias Gremory, her hair was past her waist, tied back by a yellow ribbon, she, along with the other two, was wearing the Kuo uniform which showed off their racks too well, seriously, it's almost as if the school was trying to attract perverts. Akano, did you find anything? The woman nodded, Amano Yuma asked Issei on a date to take place this Sunday, knowing who she is, it's quite suspicious, Rias had sent Akano in place of Kaneko since the latter was still slightly riled up after the incident with Naruto, she wanted to give the short girl some time to calm down back into her normal personality. Issei Hyodo was part of the infamous perverted trio, though he was nearly as perverted as the other two, Matsuda and Motohama, Issei didn't flaunt it as much, that said, other than his perversion, he was completely average on the outside, he had messy brown hair that stuck up randomly and reached down to his light brown eyes, he didn't have much body tone, but he wasn't the skinniest either. It seems my intuition was right on the money then, I made the correct choice by having you watch him. Bucko. What do you want to do? Akano asked, the redhead looked at the chessboard below her, picking up a pawn, He'll make some preliminary preparations, but in the end, it all depends on him. Meanwhile, outside the door, a blonde was discreetly listening to the entire conversation, the sides of his mouth twitched up in a mischievous smile, they're watching Issei, huh. Guess I have something to do this weekend after all, without another word, Naruto strode away silently, wondering what Sunday will bring. Man, their date is so boring, Naruto complained, watching as the two walked together in the sunset, heading for the park, so far. They tried on clothes, got ice cream, and walked, that was it. All of the suspense and curiosity and all Naruto got as a reward was watching one of the lamest dates ever. Nothing seemed suspicious about Yuma or Issei, if you discount the fact that the boy blushed bright red whenever his gaze drifted to her chest, 
In fact, he never even spotted a member of the occult research club following them. Ooh, yippee, they're going to a park as it's starting to get dark, if anything happens, it'll happen now, hopefully, I need to get back home and sleep, thankfully, he had the foresight to bring dinner, instant sealed ramen, with him on the stocking expedition. As it was starting to get dark, Yuma ran up to a small fountain and turned around to Issei, her hands cutely holding her purse behind her back, say, Issei-kun, do you mind doing me a favor to commemorate our first date? She was moving awkwardly close, oh man. Are they going to kiss? She bowed in front of Issei, w what kind of favor? He gasped out. Could you die, please? Huh? Naruto wondered, he was too confused to jump out of his tree and stop whatever was happening. What? Issei gaped, or, uh, sorry, Yuma-chan, can you, uh, repeat that? This time, she leaned closer and whispered it, but Naruto could hear from his position in the trees, could you die, please? Then, the strangest thing happened, she was naked, for a moment, then one second later she was scantily dressed in black strips for clothes, Naruto nearly gaped himself when he saw two bird-like wings on her back, her whole demeanor had changed, he had to stop whatever Yuma was from killing Issei. Although short-lived, playing innocent lovey deve with you was fun, so, a long, black spear of light materialized out of nowhere, please die, she threw it, expecting it to impale the human in the stomach. Issei widened his eyes, but the pain never came, instead, someone had blurred in front of him, holding the spear with both hands, the tip of it had barely cut his savior's own stomach before all the momentum had stopped, and Naruto-san? He gasped. Another weak human. The girl formerly known as Yuma wondered aloud, no matter, I'll just have to kill both of you, the spear that hit the blonde disappeared and reformed in her hands. Who are you, Amano Yuma? Naruto asked in a deadly tone, stepping forward and slipping into a fighting stance. Shimir laughed and threw the spear at them, move, I see. Naruto shouted, knocking him to the side while he jumped away, the spear struck the ground behind where they were standing, Issei was on the ground, completely shocked. I'll have to do this with my chakra, Naruto knew that, and he felt so stupid for not thinking ahead, he could have planned or something, so he wouldn't have to let the cat out of the bag, I won't let you hurt my classmate. He ran at Yuma, unsealing a kanai from his arm and gripping it tightly, but she simply flew up above the water fountain to avoid him, ha, huh, you can't get me, she was interrupted by a punch to the stomach. No way, a human just jumped 15 feet in the air. But Naruto wasn't done, before Yuma knew it, there were two Naruto's, and one threw the other to close the distance between them, lifting his leg, the blonde delivered a powerful axe kick to her shoulder, sending her crashing to the ground. She crashed into the ground, denting it slightly from impact, but no large crater formed, struggling, she stood up and faced the teen who landed a few feet away, in a panicked voice, she asked, what are you? He returned that with a foxy smirk, you stole the words right out of my mouth, bird lady. You want to hurt my friends, you better go through me first. He pumped a fist before placing his hands together in a signature cross hand sign. Two clones poofed into existence beside him, then, they all charged at her. Containing her surprise, she quickly made another spear and threw it at one of the three Naruto's, he dodged, skidding to the side of the light spear, before she knew it, they had reached her. The first one lunged for a punch on her right, so she jabbed him in the shoulder with a fist, in a poof of smoke, the clone disappeared, another one was already under her, kicking towards her chest, she sweeped her leg, knocking him into the air but not making that one disappear. She was off balance when the last Naruto came at her, a small blue orb forming in his right hand, shit. Rasengan. Naruto declared, slamming the orb straight into her stomach. She coughed blood as the attack sent her flying, crashing through two whole trees before losing momentum, she slumped on the ground, back against a tree, but fully alive, he walked up to her, upset that it was such an easy fight, after two years, though he still trained, it was nice to have a good warm up, hell yeah. I've still got it. His clone poofed away, revealing that the clone was the one who used the Rasengan. Listen up, bird lady, I am not going to kill you, cause I don't like death, but do me a favor, she looked up, blood leaking from the corner of her mouth, don't attack my friends, or I won't be able to hold back, Issei wasn't Rei his friend, but that wasn't Naruto's point or concern, he just hated death, all death brought was more pain, more hatred, and it only fueled the cycle, he would never kill if he could help it. Th, thank you. Yuma managed weakly, I am Rainer, she knew if it was almost anyone else that saw her attack their friend, they would have gone for the kill. Naruto nodded, go fly away or whatever, I think Issei's about to have a heart attack or something, 
The brunette hadn't moved through the entire short-lived fight and had a wide-eyed look plastered on his face. Rainer nodded meekly, standing up a bit wobbly, she gave a weak smile and walked away, wandering further into the park's forest, Naruto sighed loudly and rushed over to the fallen pervert, shaking him a little, wake up, man, get a hold of yourself. Was I dreaming? Issei replied absently, no, and I have to get you home, and you can bet your ass I don't want to carry you all the way. I saw Yuma-chan's boob, Issei commented dreamily, oh. He screamed when he felt a forceful hit to the shoulder. You awake? Why yeah, sorry, was that all real? You know, with Yuma-chan having wings, and there were like three of you? Yeah, I am almost as clueless as you are, but thankfully I know just the right school club to ask about it. Naruto reached out a hand and pulled Issei to his feet, I wonder why Rainer would attack him, he seems completely normal and utterly confused, kinda like me with the Akatsuki, that only made him think more about this world, it wasn't the shinobi nations, and there was no knowledge of sealing, so that was out, but then again, a person like Rainer could exist without him knowing, so what else couldn't he manage to figure out? Kakashi sensei always thought I was a W full at looking underneath the underneath. Issei waved a hand in front of the blonde's face, Naruto senpei, are you alright? You spaced out there for a sec. Oh. What? Yeah I am fine. How about we walk to your house together in case something else wants to gut you? Gee good plan. RRRRIIIINNG. RRRRIIINNG. Crash Naruto yawned awake as he looked at the pieces of his alarm clock on the floor. Strange, I slept in, he never slept in, well, he did, but the times were few and far between, so it was kind of surprising, well, that's what you get for hanging out with a friend until one in the morning, I still can't believe that I gave him the first issue of Icha Icha, I know that idea is gonna bite me in the ass someday, he sighed, noticing that he was still in yesterday's clothes. In less than ten minutes, he was dressed, his backpack was packed, and he had stuffed three cups of instant ramen in it for lunch along with an apple, see, he ate healthy, and don't let anyone convince you otherwise, he made himself a small breakfast from various microwavable things and took off for school, running instead of waiting for the bus. As expected, he arrived at the school a few minutes before the bus did, after all, any shinobi ran fast, the problem was that he couldn't run his top speed in public, but it didn't bother him too much, instead of hurrying inside and waiting, he sat on the bench for a few minutes, waiting for his mind to remember the events from Sunday with clarity. After a couple minutes, he stood up and wandered through the hallways before spotting Issei and the rest of the perverted trio, last night with Yuma-chan was weird, Issei was saying, leaning up against the wall. Yuma-chan? Motohama replied, tapping his glasses. Issei returned the confused look, yeah, don't you remember her? I introduced you to her Friday before school. You never introduced anyone, Issei, Motohama replied. It's probably a product of all your delicious fantasies, Matsuda declared making a few students glance over in disgust, Naruto was disturbed that someone said that in public, in a school of girls. Issei. The blonde called, walking over, oh, Naruto senpei, please tell me you still remember Yuma-chan. Yeah, I do, and stop it with that senpei stuff, he wasn't one for that kind of stuff anyways, and he never used senpei or san for people that he knew personally, and after talking with Issei for a while, he could say that they were friends, were officially friends now. Right. The one with glasses spoke up, so you're Uzumaki Naruto, eh? I heard you wrote books, but I doubt they would be interesting since they aren't about the female physique. Naruto glared at him, a small tick mark on his brow, oi, ill have you know that even though I like girls, it doesn't mean I am going to write porn. Not even Aero Senen was this bad, he groaned, grabbing Issei's shoulder and leaning in. To Issei, he added, don't mention Yuma for the rest of the day, Something weird's going on here and we should meet up after school in the old building to figure it out, got it? The brunette nodded, he raised his voice so the others could hear. All right, I gotta get to class you pervs, oh, and Issei, try not to get beat up by the kendo club again, as hilarious as it was. The teen's face turned pink, later in class, Kiba Yuto was still staring at him, I am going to find out what's going on if it kills me. Apart from brain-splitting boredom, Last period's algebra gave Naruto a new, unfamiliar sensation, he was anxious, no, not because he wanted to learn math, that's plain insanity, it was because had finally figure out what was going on with the occult research club, he obviously connected the dots and assumed that the club members knew about Yuma's true identity, but how? Normally, Naruto would leave the house to Shikamaru or one of the Junin, but they weren't there, and now he had to look out for Issei, his own genin in a sense, if you exclude the fact that the kid is almost useless in any type of fight and has no experience with violence, 
not counting getting beat up by girls. A ringing sound pierced his thoughts, making his head shoot up from the desk. I have to find Issei, he's in class 2C right now, standing up before the rush of students, he expertly weaved around the desks, though keeping normal human speed mind you, he did notice that Kiba moved to ask him something, but the fellow blonde gave up when a mob of students followed the Uzumaki out of class, it seemed everyone was elated to head home on Monday. Among the heads of the crowd of students, Naruto was easily able to spot his friend, Issei, over here. The brunette turned his head, confused, and he didn't see Naruto. Despite the blonde being 5 foot 9, moments later, the mob thinned by over half of the students as they made their way out the doors, and Naruto made his way to Issei. You ready to find out something weird? Naruto asked with a devilish grin. No, not really, but, hey, it's not like I can ignore it, Issei replied with a shrug. The sentence only brought back more memories of Yuma's boobs, which made his gaze turn distant and his mouth water slightly. A hit on the back snapped him out of it pretty quickly, oi, try to be serious, hypocrite, he told himself, he shrugged, it was good advice either way, and he didn't have to follow it. Hey, you too, it was Kiba, Yuto Kiba. What are you doing here? Issei asked. He's a member of the weird club that was spying on you, Naruto replied. I thought you were the one spying, ne Naruto-san. Kiba returned with a pleasant smile, Naruto sighed, well, he hadn't really bothered to hide it from them after all. Waving to some of their members on occasions, being in the city also made it much harder to hide and watch without being noticed by a third party. Issei looked at the blonde author incredulously, you were spying on me? And no, yes, but I did save your life, still, spying? It was reconnaissance. Kiba decided to break it up before it got worse, Issei-san, Naruto-san, Rias Bucko asked me to escort both of you to the occult research club, she said that you might have some questions. Naruto shrugged, all right. I see no reason why not, Issei nodded, the two humans followed Kiba as he walked slowly through the school, acting like they had all the time in the world, Naruto felt like he was going to break down and start fighting like a little kid. This club is creepy, Naruto decided, looking around the room. He was outside when he heard their conversation, so he never got the chance to look inside and figure out what could possibly have been going on. In hindsight, that was a mistake. This room clearly had many secrets that a simple peek would have been useful to clear up, on the other hand, he doubted that examining the weird circle thing on the ground would have helped whatsoever, there were a couple red Victorian style couches and various chairs that populated the room and even a bathroom in the back, it seemed that everyone had their own couch or chair to sit in, minus the two newcomers, they both felt like standing. Kaneko gave him a hard look, Naruto, she greeted. Kaneko, he replied with a grin, so, Uzumaki Naruto and Hyodo Issei. Rias Gremory hummed, sitting down on the red couch. Naruto was startled by her red hair, though had seen it before. It always brought back bad memories and pain, no doubt you both found something odd last night, however you managed to defeat the fallen angel is a mystery to me, but no matter, we found her an hour later when we realized Issei did not die, at the look from Naruto, she added, don't worry, we didn't kill her, she was already gone by the time we got there, but her blood and feathers were everywhere, Naruto knew they were following Issei. So Rainer was a fallen angel, whatever that means, wait, Naruto said, why did you think Issei was going to die? Are you trying to kill him? He narrowed his eyes protectively. Before we go further, Naruto Senpei, Rias interjected. Clearly taking the conversation from that topic, there are a few things you need to be aware of. Naruto glanced at the reactions of the other three occult research members, but each of them had an emotionless face, actually, Akano was grinning evilly for some unknown reason but Naruto knew that to be normal, and Kiba had a small smile on his face, also normal, Kaneko refused to show him any emotion, which was kind of irritating, though he wasn't good, he normally could read expressions, but hers was blank, hollow. Like what? And Issei, stop staring at her boobs, this is serious. Ea. I wasn't I swear, but they're so huge, he added to himself, mouth hanging open, moments later, he regained composure and put on his best straight face, though his eyes kept wandering to Rios' chest. Pervert, Kaneko said, Naruto's eyes jumping to her face to read any emotion, but there was none, even as she made the accusation. Anyways, Rias continued, what do you two know of devils, angels, fallen angels, and the so-called supernatural? Absolutely nothing, eh? Were Naruto and Issei's simultaneous replies, respectively, Issei elaborated, you mean like angels in the Bible? Yes, they are real, Rias replied, devils and fallen angels. Angels that fell from heaven due to indulgence in the seven sins. Are real too, 
and we can offer Issei and you protection from the latter, should he be willing to join the club? Naruto paused to think this all out, so, supernatural things he probably should have read about were real, had heard of the Bible but never read it, being the huge bookworm that he was, not, he had his own beliefs anyways, he was going into this blind, he knew that, but for some reason joining the club had higher implications than he thought, if Issei was in danger. Why would Issei need protection? Naruto finally asked after seconds of silence. Yeah, Issei agreed, why did Yuma-chan attack me? Rias answered in her unyielding patience, her name is Rainer, and it is because you have a sacred gear. A what? Both humans replied, a gift bestowed by God to certain humans. Naruto snorted at that, it seemed familiar, didn't it? Issei was inevitably given something he never asked for, and now he needed protection from people who want to take it away, he didn't much like anyone calling themselves God either, he secretly hoped it wasn't Nagato again, and that his fellow student had moved on without somehow surviving and taking up a God complex again, it almost made him laugh at the sheer stupidity of his worries, worries that only a nonsensical, ridiculous person like him could have. Issei decided that this was enough, how can you protect me better than Naruto? He beat up Yuma-chan, uh, Rainer, pretty badly, Naruto commended him for the unperverted question, this dude was like Jiraiya, only more perverted more of the time, at least he didn't write erotica or porn, but that hardly placed him below Naruto's sensei in perverseness, beating Jiraiya was impressive by any standard. Simple, Akano chuckled, he is a human, and we are devils, she speed her black, almost bat-like, wings behind her, lighting her right hand ablaze with streaks of yellow lightning. Akano, Rias sighed, we aren't supposed to say that outright, everyone in here, minus you two, is a devil, standing up, the rest revealed their wings, which all looked similar to Akino's. I suppose I should stop being surprised now, the blonde sage groaned, why couldn't things ever be simple in his life, he knew he should nt have been curious, he knew it. Sorry, bucko, you were going to tell them anyways, she made the wings disappear and sat back down, Rias and the rest followed suit. Naruto wasn't convinced, so what, you're a different species, hoo hoo, if fallen angels as you call them are only as strong as Rainer, ill have no problem keeping my friend safe. Rias finally found her argument. Rainer was only a foot soldier, she was weak, meant to easily kill an unsuspecting human, most of them have more power, much more power, and I don't sense any of that power in you, now they might be after you too, Naruto, wouldn't you and Issei want to become devils to protect yourselves? Do you want to make me a devil? Issei gasped, he wasn't ready for this kind of thing, he was just an average high school student, a little perverted, but average nonetheless, so what if he had a sacred gear or whatever, Naruto did fine with the last Phalan angel and friends looked out for each other. Rias nodded, Kaneko stood up, still almost a foot shorter than Naruto, you use chakra, don't you, she asked, looking at the blonde. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, yeah, since you guys told me stuff I wasn't supposed to know and all, I'll admit that I am half decent with chakra, I only got Rainer because she was surprised, a lie, he actually managed to lie, granted, it was the truth, only bent, but those made the most convincing lies of all, he could have beat Rainer without any jutsu, even if she surprised him. Oh, Kaneko commented, sitting down, maybe he wouldn't be such a good teacher after all, if he was that weak. So, Issei, Naruto, Rias interrupted, do both of you want to become devils? Devils can even build their own harem, if they become strong enough, she winked at Issei, oh that's just cheating, Naruto complained. Really? The brunette exclaimed, Issei, Naruto said in his rarely used, serious voice, you are jumping into a decision that you could regret. All of these people are deferring to Rias and follow her orders. I didn't peg you as that kind of guy, on top of that, you don't know the exact strengths or weaknesses of devils, I could train you, and you won't have to rush into such a life-changing decision, that seemed to get him thinking and stop the rash decision. Naruto let out a breath of relief, who knew what these women, and Kiba, were actually capable of or what their morality was, after all, calling yourself a devil has implications in the very name itself. A shame, Uzumaki, Akano chuckled, we really could have used another member in our peerage, the words especially if they're a guy went unsaid, but the members of Rias peerage knew they were floating in Akino's mind. Peerage? replied the blonde, sure, I am their king, their leader you could say, Rias answered, but I don't control them like slaves, they are my family, and they have the free will and ability to do whatever they want as long as it doesn't hurt the peerage as a whole, they can't leave either, without my permission, though none have wanted to anyways, other devils treat their peerage badly, but my parents raised me differently, a family? Naruto sorely needed one of those, but looking at the way they all stood quiet as their leader talked, 
he couldn't say it was actually a family, they may look out for each other, maybe even bicker like family, but they don't have the true love he believed a family should have, they should be on equal grounds, no matter what. I say no, Naruto replied, finally making his decision. Why? Akano asked, before Ryusuke'd, curious, Naruto looked around at their honestly puzzled faces, was he missing something? Was this not something that would be turned down by most? I don't want more power or strength, I do want friends and family, but not in this way, has anyone left your group? They shook their heads, and if they did, let's say, could they ever come back? Rias gave him a glare, though she didn't answer, I thought not. That isn't free will like you say, I spent most of my life listening to superiors I like tell me to do something I didn't want to, even kill a couple times, I never really listened though, and as mad as Ba Chan got, at least I was able to disagree, also, I feel like if I give up being human, I'll stop trying to find a way back home, and that is something that would never happen, I am just a visitor, I can join a permanent group like this. Snap out of it Naruto, he berated himself, you're brooding like Sasuke, and that's seriously not cool, unexplainably, he started chuckling after that dark, confusing statement, making the members of the club jump in surprise, hey, sorry guys, guess I coulda just said no or something, still, it was pretty dramatic, fitting to be in my book, nay? He chuckled at the inside joke about the statement, as observant as they are, it'll be simply impossible for them to connect my past with my books, as long as I don't say anything stupid, wow, come to think of it, that meant his chances sucked. Hey, Issei, he added, snapping the boy out of his thoughts, Wadaya ya say I train you for a week, and we find out all we can about the other side to this world, after that, you can choose to join these girls or not. T train? I guess, the brunette replied, you'll never awaken your sacred gear without us, though. It is sealed within him, right? Naruto asked. Yes, Kiba replied, finally choosing to say something. Then well be fine. None of them understood the Uzumaki, nothing he was saying made sense, first he convinced Issei to decline, or postpone, a decision most would literally give their life for, then, he declined himself, speaking of his past in such a dark way, finally, he seems overjoyed that the sacred gear is sealed within Issei and that he has no idea how to activate it. Rias furrowed beer brow in frustration, surely, she was missing something. I want to go with Naruto, he's strong, and though he doesn't sound it, I think he knows what he's talking about, we are kinda in this together anyways. It'll give you a week to decide, Issei, Rias finally agreed, on one condition, Naruto, said blonde turned his gaze to her, blue eyes met blue eyes, and Rias wondered if they were actually so different, never publish this in your books. The blonde giggled stupidly, hey, can't promise that one devil Chan, he turned to leave, grabbing Issei's shoulder and taking a few steps, ya yeah, no, Rias, he looked over his shoulder, meeting her eyes again, I like your hair, then, he was gone, for some reason, red hair was just something he approved of. What was that about? Kiba wondered, I have no idea. Rias sighed, she really needed strength for the rating game against Riser. So she didn't get stuck married to a prick, just like that. Her two best candidates literally walked out the door, and she only had a week to convince them to somehow change their minds, she was also kind of worried about Issei, seeing how he could die without good protection, even if Kaneko said Naruto could use chakra, that still left him very limited, and the abilities of chakra were nowhere near what his book described, that stuff was outlandish, intentionally so, and only written to make money. Akano giggled, don't we all, Naruto and Issei were in the park, sitting on the grass by the fountain, why? Naruto thought it would be a genius idea since no one ever goes there excluding evil girlfriends that want to kill someone for possessing a sacred gear, that made their chances of being noticed by the human population far lower than they were at Naruto's house or anywhere in the city, it was about 6 at night, and both of them had just collaborated to finish the homework, doing only a half-assed job, leaving them plenty of time to train. Urk, Naruto, how can you sit still for so long? Issei complained, rubbing his head. Not even twitching or breaking his perfect lotus position, he replied, no idea. Maybe it helped that if I moved, an old frog beat me with a stick. Huh just kidding, duh, Issei groaned, I thought you were going to train me, not make me sit still. There are many ways to train, Naruto replied wisely, opening his eyes, meditating teaches you patience, which I really still need, and helps you focus your mind. God knows that our minds are fucked after the club and two hours of homework, half assed homework still sucked. What am I supposed to be focusing on? That Rias Senpei is an extremely hot devil with enormous, ah. You hit me, the blonde had a long tree branch in his lap, but he still looked to be in the lotus position, eyes closed, Issei huffed and closed his eyes again. 
Naruto decided to open his eyes and move to a normal sitting position, facing Issei. Look inside you for a source of power. That's how I'd imagine a sacred gear, or I could make it activate, but it could be painful. All right. I am looking inside myself. Stop talking. Naruto commanded, holding his head in his hands. There was a reason he never was a sensei, or a chunin for that matter, and it was because he honest to God couldn't teach. I had to do my best, Datbeo. Otherwise Issei could be in danger. Two minutes passed with a nearly motionless Issei trying to find the source of power for his sacred gear, but nothing came of it, he got into a regular sitting position and groaned loudly, wanting to punch the ground, I can't do it. I am just a completely average human, I can't sit still for ten minutes and draw power randomly from something we don't even know exists. Looks like we gotta do this the hard way, Naruto liked putting an effort for training. Sure, but seals were different than physical training. His mind always hurt afterwards, and he hated it every time. Rolling down the sleeve of his school uniform jacket, he didn't get the chance to take it off. Naruto placed his hand over one of the many intricately drawn seals on his arm. Issei's eyes widened when he saw that Naruto's arm looked like it was one incomprehensible tattoo. I am not too good at seals, so I can't make them very compact, thus, my arms are kind of covered in them. I usually wash them off before school, but I slept in this morning. He rubbed the back of his head habitually. Weird. So, how are we going to do this? Give me a second, geez, it's like you think I can draw a complicated seal in mere seconds, it takes forever, the blonde complained, he unsealed a brush and some paper, laying the small sheet on the ground flat, then, he brought the tip to the paper and started drawing what looked like a bunch of squiggles around a circle. As Naruto began working at a specific line, he groaned, shit, he whined, pushing the paper aside and unsealing another one, Issei raised an eyebrow but see add nothing, that is, until Naruto crumpled up the second paper. Are you sure that you're good enough to use this? The brunette asked wearily. Truthfully? No, probably not, look on the bright side though, we're both learning. Yeah, but you're experimenting on me, that make him sound like Orochimaru, that scandalous, brown-haired sacred gear user. Detail, details, Naruto hummed, placing his brush on another piece of paper, aha. I have an idea. Quickly, he drew a bunch of overlaying squiggles and placed a circle around them, then he added more on the outside, making the seal look like a miniature sun, on one side, he wrote the kanji for body, while he put soul on the other, now, take off your shirt and turn around. What? The blonde didn't seem to say that as a joke. Just do it, sighing, the sacred gear wilder took off his jacket and red shirt, tossing them on the ground, all right then, don't scream. Why well, then there was pain. Naruto had slammed the seal on Issei's back, then it felt like he was being electrocuted constantly, after 10 seconds, the longest 10 seconds of his life, the tingling of 10,000 needles stabbing every part of his body stopped, he slumped over. Shit, are you okay? Naruto knew that his friend was alive, though okay was a different matter. Am I okay? You're the most idiotic, impulsive, and weirdest person I ever met. And I know devils now, very, hot, devils, then Issei slumped over again this time out cold. Naruto leaned closer so that he could finally feel the small hum of power at Issei's core. Hey, it worked, he commented, looking at the side effects, so this is why Kakashi sensei told me seals were dangerous, I am not messing around on my friends again, even if Issei wouldn't know it. Naruto was worried for a second, and he was also upset that he hurt the brunette, since he was that same person Nagato believed in two years ago, he hated to see his friends in pain, despite it sometimes being funny. It was nearly 6.15 now, and they were wasting time, he had a week to get Issei strong enough so that he could be fine on his own or with only a slight amount of protection from Naruto, he didn't trust those girls, and Kiba, enough yet, they seemed to have good intentions, but that didn't always equate to trust. Reaching his and towards his other arm again, he unsealed a bottle of ice-cold water, then he poured it all over Issei's head. Ah. Sorry. Naruto replied with a guilty look, cold water wakes people up. You're lucky you don't have a mustache and orange clothes right now. Issei looked at his hands, shifting to a kneeling position, so, did it work? Can I use this sacred gear? Don't know about that, but here, Naruto plucked a leaf off the ground, stick this to your forehead, his friend did so, and to both of their surprise, it stayed there. The hell did you do? The leaf is still there, Naruto smirked, I unlocked your chakra. See. The seal was based off a yin yang design that I came up on the spot that circulates your system stupidly fast. Basically, I think I broke your first chakra gate by overloading the system. Actually, I have no idea what I did, only that it worked. Issei sighed. The blonde was a genius in his own, personal way, his very personal, somewhat impossible, way. 
Jutsu, Chakra? Kaneko san mentioned Chakra, right? Yeah, she seems to be the only one besides me to know what it is, in short, everyone has Chakra, most here just don't use it, Chakra can let you stick to walls, stand on ceilings, blow fire, make clones, the usual, I think it's the spiritual and physical energies of your body that do something or another, oh, you can change its nature to fire, water, earth, lightning, or wind and use specific elemental releases. Issei gaped, cool. How do I do it? First, we need to build up your chakra reserves, but I already have an idea for that, though, first things first, I still have that pesky sacred gear to unlock, don't move me for a minute. Uh, okay, if he hadn't learned to leave Naruto be and not question the reasons, he probably should have be sent back to primary school, so he just sat and waited, leaf stuck firmly on his forehead, he had no idea how to stop it from staying there, so he just let it be, not even bothering to touch it. A minute later, Naruto snapped open his eyes, only this time there were golden and had a bar pupil, not only that, but there was orange pigment around his eyes, I am a sage if you were wondering, so much for explanations. Sure. The brunette replied, head in hands, I am not messing around anymore. Naruto looked at Issei, scrutinizing him for any sign of what a sacred gear may be, there. He detected a powerful life force in Issei's arm. For whatever reason, someone sealed something inside Issei's left arm. Quickly, he ran a hand over one of the seals, grabbing a piece of paper and snatching his brush. He drew a simple release seal as quickly as possible and placed it lightly on Issei's arm. Kai, he whispered, and the seal glowed bright blue. Before either of them knew it, there was a small flash of green light, and a gauntlet appeared over the brunette's hand and for arm. It was red with a green gem at the back of the hand. The sacred gear covered most of his hand and forearm, excluding the fingers, making it look something like the hand of a dragon. Naruto widened his eyes. The hell? They both gasped, looking at that arm. Holy crap, Issei gaped, that thing is cool. Naruto's eyes were back to normal, making him wonder if it was just a trick of the light. Meanwhile, the blonde was cursing himself for not thinking of that 17 minutes ago, when they started. Guess we have to start some training now, eh, Issei? It was nearly 10 at night, and both Kuo students were exhausted. Naruto, as an after affect of using sage mode three times. Using his brain, and going through school, Issei, on the other hand, had experienced three and a half hours of torture, it seemed Naruto was completely unfamiliar with the strength of humans. Since he kept expecting Issei to do things he should have been able to do, even without using his sacred gear, he knew there was no way he was supposed to do a hundred push-ups, hell he could hardly do twenty-five before, but he made it to seventy-eight before crashing down, Naruto said that chakra enhanced muscles, so he was much stronger than without, his friend was too tired to argue. Naruto, by standards of the shinobi, was as relaxed as hell that night. By Issei's standards, he was unintentionally a slave driver. Issei ran laps, equaling about four miles, through the park. Only to find that he was running close to seven-minute mile splits. After rarely running two, it seemed impossible, that said, Naruto could do less than a three-minute mile, not counting biju mode, and Rock Lee could accomplish it in God knows how fast, then, Issei took a break and meditated for a few minutes, finding it more relieving this time, after that, Naruto knew the kid was physically exhausted, so they took to chakra training and walking up trees, he still couldn't get halfway up the tree, but it felt amazing that he could do it at all. By the end of that, he really needed to sleep, you know, you learn pretty fast, Issei, Naruto complimented, patting him on the back. I didn't really do anything other than make use of whatever you did to me. Nah, you put in some effort, and I am sorry for not knowing how hard you could train, I do pretty ridiculous workouts since I've been training with Chakra my entire life, the blonde rubbed his hair again. Issei shrugged, knowing Naruto would blow off any question about his past, so, what got you to write those books? Money, Naruto deadpanned, I was broke, with your skills. Issei wondered, he watched as a bowl of ramen poofed into existence, had never get used to that, ramen? The blonde offered. Uh sure, we didn't get dinner though, I'd hate to eat your food. Trust me, I've got plenty, the brunette nodded, taking the ramen and a pair of chopsticks, eating it quickly, mildly impressed that it was still hot. Speaking of dinner, oh shit, Issei blinked, I forgot to tell my mom that I'd be home this late, oh this stinks, shall be pissed that I didn't call or text. Naruto widened his eyes, I I am sorry, did Naruto just stutter, he surely didn't hear right, I guess I was too focused on making you strong, say, can I just spend that night at your house if y'all have a guest room? I don't see why not, Naruto was weird, sometimes, he acted about as mature as a ten year old, then he had those moments where you knew had seen the worst of the world and lived to tell the tale, 
then he acted plain strange. It was the second of those that sometimes made Naruto seem older than Issei, even if the blonde was technically 18, a year older than him. Thanks, man. He and Issei walked in silence as the latter slurped his ramen up, reaching into his pocket to grab a cell phone. He felt that Naruto froze right next to him. The blonde was staring off into the distance, looking at the trees, with his own slightly better eyesight. Issei could make out a figure in a top hat and overcoat. The next thing they noticed was the sky change, being covered in pinks, blues, and weird auras. The figure moved closer, revealing a tall man in a gray overcoat, face too obscured by darkness to see his eyes, so you're the ones who attacked Rainer. A black, bird-like pair of wings opened behind him. It was the other way around the way I remember it, right, Issei? Naruto smirked, cracking his knuckles, he was tired, but that would never get in the way of him protecting his friends, especially if it was another of these bird guys, also known as fallen angels. Why yeah, she told us not to attack you, but I see thing differently, a spear materialized in his hand. Issei just waved his hands, w we don't want any trouble. Naruto nodded, if you kill him, that Rias girl will just resurrect him anyways. That's not helping. A scared Issei thought frantically, he was happy with his life as is, and he didn't want it to end so soon. Oh, a devil is here. The man smirked, yeah, and shell fry your ass if you don't get out of here, the blonde shot back, he didn't like fighting, this was the peaceful route, threats, he just wanted to talk the guy out of it, but something told him the fallen angel wasn't the most reasonable of people. The man let out a quick barking laugh and grinned, where is she now then? Look, Naruto sighed, I know you come here either wanting revenge or to finish the job, either way, it's a stupid errand, if you kill Issei, Rias will revive him, you attack me for revenge, one I can't assure your safety, and two I was only a bystander, the real reason Rainer was hurt was because she chose violence as a solution, she's not a bad person, I think, though that didn't stop her from making a reckless and careless decision, don't make the same one as her. Ha! Huh. The falled angel laughed, you're amusing enough to be kept alive, even if I sense no power from both of you, since this is devil territory, I will leave you with a warning, if we meet again, you better be ready for a fight, my name is Donisik, and pray that never happens, and just like that, the fallen angel flew away, the stars returned to normal, and the two chakra users began walking back to Issei's house. You know, I am not so scared of them anymore, Issei pointed out, though it seemed not to be entirely true, but I still really want to see Reynare's tits again. Naruto sighed at his pervert friend, you know, there's still that book I gave you. Oh my god I forgot, Issei exclaimed, quickly reaching his back and plucking out the Icha Icha book, he looked at the author, who exactly is Jiraiya of the Sanin. Whoever he was, the man was a god amongst men, Issei vowed to worship his enlightening teachings forever. The blonde let out a calm breath, I have a feeling this next week is going to be more trouble than it's worth, he wasn't too worried about Donisik, but he was worried about not knowing how strong his potential opponents were compared to Issei and himself, I am not as strong as I used to be. It was a full two days later at the park, Naruto was once again training Issei. Trying to make him use his sacred gear to accomplish something. Neither knew whether it made Issei faster, stronger, lighter or what, it was a mystery to both, and it is challenging training something without knowing what it was or what it did. On another note, Issei made it up the tallest tree in the park earlier that night, to both of their surprise, Naruto told him he did well and that he had gained a better control of chakra than Naruto had for the longest time, Issei also had less chakra, making the task easier, Naruto had advised him to read his two books for advice, since they were based off of his chakra abilities even if it was complete fiction, Issei forgot about it though, and Naruto didn't remind him. Right now, the two were sparring, though it seemed to be a one-sided fail, every time Issei went for a punch or kick, Naruto could see the move miles away and avoid it, or he blocked it head on with Issei's low strength, even though the sacred gear was activated, the brunette didn't want to fight at first, but when Naruto said it's help him stay alive to finish the next Icha Icha book, there was no argument. Issei went at him with a jab to the right shoulder, which Naruto slapped aside, noticing the enormous gap in Issei's stance, he hit his friend, open-palmed, in the chest, after blinking out the surprise, the brunette tried for a punch to Naruto's own chest, using his sacred gear arm, only to find it blocked by both arms in a cross, the most shocking thing was that Naruto had skidded back. That punch was pretty strong compared to your others, Naruto commented, glancing at the trees quickly, Issei looked at the arm, still not able to come to terms with what was happening. I need more power, Issei thought, feeling weak, had lose to friend easily in almost any situation, and Naruto always played down his skill and strength, saying he knew people stronger or faster than himself, 
Issei knew he was stronger than any of the normal humans, but could he beat even a member of the weakest group of fallen angels, including Rainer? No, he didn't think he could. Hit me again with that sacred gear, Naruto stood, arms wide, waiting for a punch, don't worry, I am fairly resilient. Issei nodded and went for another punch, come on, do something, he urged his sacred gear. Boost. A voice inside the sacred gear cried as Issei hit his opponent, this time, instead of skidding back, Naruto actually got air and gripped his stomach, needless to say, he landed expertly on his feet, Issei looked at the sacred gear but nothing looked any different, weird, other than that, the brunette had felt some other force behind his attack that didn't relate to the sacred gear. OWW, whatever happened, it worked, Naruto gave him a thumbs up, rubbing his stomach in pain with the other hand. So that's what Issei Senpei's sacred gear does, a person in the trees wondered, peeking out from behind a branch, she had been watching them train the entire evening that night, trying to figure out what Naruto was teaching him. Suddenly, the blonde shifted his gaze directly to her hiding spot, you happy now, Kaneko? You happy now, Kaneko? The cat-like girl gasped from her position in the trees, he knew I was here and why? How? Containing her surprise, she jumped, flying through the air towards the small clearing in the park and landing lively on the grass, she stood up and strode over to Naruto, who was giving her an unnecessarily warm smile and Issei, who just seemed shocked. As she was walking the whole time, Issei gaped, his sacred gear glowing before his arm was back its normal look. Naruto Senpei, Kaneko said, controlling her surprise, how did you know? Naruto gave a smile, he couldn't say that he was shocked that Rias would have someone watch them to discover all they could about his and Issei's abilities, but having Kaneko do it was a decision that gave him something to think about, the short girl already demonstrated that she was at odds with Naruto, so why have her try to restrain herself for so long while she patiently watched them train? He was no Shikamaru, and that troubled him, Issei, if he could focus his mind on anything but tits, would even be able to figure it, nah, he pushed that away, the kid couldn't focus to save his life, though he was clearly working on it, he found himself wondering more about Kaneko, recalling the events of Friday. Suddenly, it struck him, Chakra, she stared him oddly, confused by his random proclamation, you watched us so you could find out what we know about Chakra, either you or someone you're close to could benefit from the knowledge. How could he guess that? She asked herself, her posture surely didn't display anything that could give him the answer, and Shed only really talked to him once, figured out by a mysterious stranger, just who are you, Uzumaki Naruto? Hey, I feel stupid for not figuring it out that day on the bench, you have some personal connection to Senjutsu and Chakra that the other girls don't. The size of her Chakra reserves, while he couldn't determine the exact amount couldn't be even a quarter as large as his, sensory skills work better when other people have more Chakra or the proximity is close. Senjutsu is frowned upon, and it relies on chakra, it was information everyone who knew of chakra was able to spit out, Senjutsu was dangerous, and chakra had received a small amount of that stigma. To Naruto, however, this was shocking, while she didn't answer as had hoped, it made him wonder why the hell people would hate sages, it explained her reason for being angry all that time ago, but it didn't explain how people could hate using nature energy, sure, a few people turned into frogs, but they didn't train properly, it was a mystery. Maybe someone using Senjutsu hurt her in the past? Someone close to her? He doubted it was right. In something very Unaruto like, he felt as if he'd make a deal for information instead of pounding it out of or convincing his opponent, it was a different world, one in which he might not have been able to afford not knowing, especially if Rainer was as comparatively weak as Rias said. Look, Kaneko, let's just stop trying to dance around the conversation here. You want to know about my connection to Chakra, and we want to know more about devils, who's to say that we can't both be happy? He let her stay this long so he could get some answers, and by God was he going to help Issei understand this world, he promised to help, and he always kept his promises. Bucko only needed to know about the sacred gear, twice critical, I can't give up on this now, however brash and idiotic, those two could have answers, she looked Naruto in the eye, both of their gazes unwavering. She had to ask. It was now or never, and she couldn't put this off any longer. Senjutsu is the use of nature energy, positive and negative, to add power to attacks and resilience, Chakra is partly the fuel for Senjutsu, her cold look returned, what do you know? Everything I know is in the book you read, as for Chakra, it can be used in many more ways, larger amounts of Chakra allow you to use more nature energy for longer, I guess that's a use, but it also lets you do other cool stuff, like walk up trees, or seal things. Issei's eyes shot up at the word, seal, that was what Naruto was using earlier, right? So his completely fictional book wasn't all fiction then, was it?
It looks like I have to read something other than Icha Icha tomorrow, the blonde had told him to read it before, but that didn't mean had paid attention. Your book, it's based off of real uses of chakra then. I thought that was. Impossible. You saw us training tree walking earlier, no? Trust me. Naruto rubbed the back of his head with a small grin. I don't know much about that stuff, I do know that it's real. I am so confused, Issei whined, falling on his back and staring at the sky, they kept referencing that damned book that had never bothered to look at. Kaneko supposed it was true, there was a lot of explanation. Most of which Naruto pulled out of his ass, so to speak. That explained the vast powers of shinobi, while not as destructive as some things in her life. The jutsu of the shinobi were fine-tuned for killing others. Despite the power of the opponent, mind battles and contests of wit, flinging fireballs and using lightning to trap and kill their opponents, if Naruto could use any or all of those techniques, he might pose a small threat, but a threat nonetheless, if he had the teleportation technique of the yellow flash in the book, they wouldn't even be able to blink before they were dead, teleportation with chakra seals was a frightening prospect. It's alright Issei, she just isn't familiar with the diversity of chakra, he looked at her, seeing her contemplative face, I should nt have told her, still, they'd never think of Menma's life being a happier Vesrian of mine, at least I could change up his abilities slightly, either way, I get the feeling that she still isn't satisfied. The blonde smirked, time for me to ask something of you, then, compared to Rainer, how strong are the devils, starting from the top ranks and including your group? I am not supposed to tell humans this information, maybe, if I do, I can get to ask him about Senjutsu as well, and those biju creatures, how much of that book is actually reality? First, though, she had a question to answer, and she wasn't going to waste time or words on thinking, she was a quiet person, only able to talk this long because the blonde human might have had answers, there are ultimate class, high class, middle class, and low class devils, along with the four great satans who rule the underworld. There are four of satan, Issei exclaimed, Kaneko shot him an annoyed look and continued. The four great satans are generally considered the most powerful. And they could destroy this entire country with some time. Some ultimate class devils are nearly as strong, while some are a little weaker, high class devils, like Bucko, are allowed to form their own peerage, she comes from the Gremini family, one of the 72 families of pure-blooded devils, middle class devils are next, the weakest are low class devils, like Issei Senpei would if he joined, there is a way to raise your rank through tests, Rainer is similar to a strong low class devil, I am guessing, since we felt her power earlier. She certainly didn't beat around the bush, Naruto thought with a chuckle, most people would have explained things, giving all the intricate details, but not Kaneko, she also wasn't supposed to give out the information, so that helped. That, helps, right now, Issei would be fucked if we go up against anyone on the level of the Satans. Maybe with Senjutsu and my backup, I could get a hit in with Rosin Shuriken, that's impossible to survive since it's like internal devastation and all, hell, I don't even know if that attack would put them down for good, damn, things were much easier when everyone was human, hey, if she's telling the truth this could actually make me work, he paused, are there any other threats on the level of the Satans? The fallen angels and angels have their own powerful leaders that could go toe to toe, there are gods and dragons, both of which are at their level or higher, the two most powerful beings are the great red, a dragon, and the Ophis, the dragon god, though she appears human, Kaneko cursed internally, she was saying too much in order to get her answers, why did she trust this Uzumaki so much? Naruto looked distantly towards the darkening blue sky, I don't think anyone has the right to claim to be a god, great red, where had he seen or heard that before? Who was it that told me the name? He wondered absently, he remembered the days when he was unleashing powers that could flatten a country like Japan, though he hadn't really trained much since he arrived on this world, still, he couldn't get arrogant, and he didn't have any place to, I just need to be strong and survive, I made a promise to Issei, but I still need to get home. Hey, Naruto, Issei waved a hand in front of his face. Oi, you think I am stupid? Naruto growled, I was totally paying attention. Kaneko rolled her eyes. Kaneko, it looks like I owe you an answer, cause you gave me two. The blonde looked at her closely, she was so off, so distant, it reminded him of Itachi, or Sasuke. He thought with a pang, two years, two years his friends have thought he was dead, I still have to be Hokage before you. The response was nearly instant, tell me everything about Senjutsu. The words spilled out before she even knew that she spoke them. It's the use of nature energy ya no, he rubbed the back of his head, I am not too good with explaining all this smart people jazz, all I really know about Senjutsu is you balance the nature energies with your body using meditation and gain extra strength and perception. 
What about insanity? A. The hell was she talking about? Sure, he was insane, possibly, but how did that apply to Senjutsu? How do you stop yourself from getting drunk on power or succumbing to negative nature energy? The you was referring to people in general, but Naruto didn't know that. Negative, like the not good kind or the below zero kind. Oh, she means the first one. Okay, he was going to pretend that he never thought that, this was a serious topic for her, one that she had emotion for, which was astounding for Kaneko, he had to help. It was in his nature, the nature energy in this world is the same, so the method must be different if people get affected by the bad energy. I bet the old geezer sage would know. Wait, geezer sage, that's it. She probably doesn't have a summoning contract. I am sure there's some cool explanation out there as to why only people with certain summoning contracts or special keke jenke like the Mokaton can use Senjutsu safely. Maybe everyone else goes insane. His face lit up and he nearly jumped out of his academy uniform. Both of the other students just thought to themselves how weird the blonde could be at times. I guess it's not really my place to tell you. I can tell this is important. So I'll ask my friends for some help to see if they'll let me. What happened in the past that made you so weary of Senjutsu? Kaneko was surprised. So Naruto wasn't alone then, a fact countering another preconception the peerage had about the Uzumaki. This would be another thing she had to report back to her club president, she'd rather not talk about her past with this stranger. What's wrong, Kaneko-san? Issei asked, finally feeling the need to break the tension, he wasn't used to all this suspense in conversations considering how most of his used to be about women's breasts. She looked down and murmured something, then, looking at the two of them, she asked herself if she could trust them, the blonde didn't seem like the kind of guy to deceive you, unless it was a harmless trick or prank, and frankly Issei wasn't dangerous yet, still, I can't tell you, she barely managed to keep her composure, to not stutter. Naruto gave a small nod, understanding all too well how hard it can be to talk about the past, even now, especially now. He had his own problems with coming to terms with the past and reality, I am more like her than I thought. I must report back to Bucko now, with that short statement, she began wandering towards the woods, not wanting to teleport in front of those two, all they could hear was the soft crunch of grass under her small feet. Wait, the footsteps stopped, if you ever want to talk, I am here, it wasn't much, in Issei's opinion, but that simple statement had a different meaning to the other two. Then she was gone, disappearing into the closely spaced trees of the park. Issei gave an audible sigh and crashed down onto the ground, legs crossed, that was so intense, he commented, looking at the spot where Kaneko used to be. The Uzumaki patted him on the back, a small laugh threatening to break through, after being in this business for a while, you get a thing for dramatics, Kaneko had it worse than she's letting on, and I really wouldn't want to push her into telling me what it was. You, are you going to make me do some training? Nah? Was the somewhat unexpected reply. I think today is the day we get some real food instead for dinner of those sealed ramen bowls. Don't worry, I got it, he smirked, pulling out his wallet, he wondered if he should tell Issei about his past, the kid was his first real friend in two years, and on top of that, they were thrown into this supernatural mess together, three days was enough for him to make a friend, that was certain, and he has risked his life for people he hardly knew, so why was this so hard to admit? He grunted, I am just as bad as Kaneko. God damn it. Issei complained throwing his hands up in defeat, when you said real food, I thought you meant something other than ramen. Naruto had taken them to a local restaurant in the downtown city as the sun began to be obscured by the clouds. Though it was nearly 7.30 at night, the blonde insisted that they go to this one place with the best food ever. Before they both head back to their separate homes and do homework for the utterly normal side of life, the place was unsurprisingly ablaze with life at this particular time, making the two wait for nearly a half hour for a table, the place was gloomy, only in lighting, though all the customers had their own conversations going, as long as they didn't scream, anything said between them would stay private, it was a nice place, but when they got the menu Issei realized he was duped. Well, they do serve stuff other than ramen, but why the hell would you buy that? They only serve one dish other than noodles, and it was written in after the menu was printed, that was never a good sign, especially when it was something like fish that could have diseases, his idiotic classmate tricked him, again, one day, he swore hell get payback, maybe switch his toothpaste with soap or something. Naruto just grinned evilly, no matter what, ramen was the best, Issei had no right to complain, after all, the somewhat rich Uzumaki was paying, admit that ramen is the best invention of mankind, and ill consider sealing some so-called real food for the next training session, or I can make you dodge wrenches again. P please not that. Issei prayed, the phrase if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a spear, 
was the motto for a good 30 minutes of their second training session, it hadn't ended up helping much other than teaching the brunette to pay attention and not to slack off. Naruto seemed in thought for a moment, oh shit. What? His head crashed into the table, I forgot to ask Kaneko something. Huh. It seemed to the sacred gear wielder that all they were doing was trading questions, what could he have possibly forgotten? The blonde sat, what the hell does your sacred gear exactly do? Issei went wide-eyed and cursed himself for not noticing that earlier, both of the teens seemed to share a little bit of idiocy between them, we can always ask Rias Senpei's peerage later. Hum, they'd have no reason to, as with Kaneko, it would probably end up as information traded for information, especially since neither party knew much about the other, and both didn't want to share their past, remember, they kinda wanted a defenseless you to die so they could give you strength and control you. With a sigh, he gave up, let's just get the ramen and go home. Home, Naruto thought again, trying to block out the past as remembered Jiraiya's words to him all those years ago, they say wherever someone is still thinking of you, that place is your home, could his home truly be here, in this other world? A red magic circle rose up from the floor, revealing a white-haired student standing in the middle of the occult research club. As the usual, the place looked like it came fresh out of a century-old home. Victorian-style chairs and decorations abounding, on the chair sat Rias Gremory. Facing off with Akano Himejima, who was on the couch. In a game of chess, at this stage in the game, it was impossible to predict whose victory it would be. Though Rias had captured a knight, rook, bishop, and three pawns, Akano only had two pawns but both of Rias' knights, however it may have looked, Rias was going to win, as she had done every single time before, after being raised in the Gremini household and being taught the evil peace system that was based almost completely off of chess, it was to be expected that she was a monster at the game. Bucko, Rias turned to see Kaneko taking a seat on the couch. You're back early, I didn't think Uzumaki-san was the kind of guy to end training before Issei dropped dead, she still felt sore that Naruto had insulted her family, saying she treated her pieces more as servants than true family, though the point was valid, she knew that they were content with how things were, and every single one would give their life for her, and shed do the same for them, that was what family meant to her. Naruto Senpei knew I was watching from the moment I got there, he only revealed it to me when Issei used a power of his sacred gear, it's a twice critical. Rias smiled, a twice critical is one of the stronger sacred gears. Not counting the thirteen Longinus, should he chose to join. It would help us greatly against Riser, as it stands. He could beat us with ease in a raiding game, we need someone. If not Issei, to tip the scales, she wasn't manipulative, she didn't want to corner people on the brink of death, forcing them into her group, no, people usually wanted the power and abilities that came with being a devil, it shocked her to the core to see the blonde so adamantly against it, so against it that he even convinced Issei to think it over, either way, she still was a devil, and she still needed more strength in her peerage. Kaneko nodded, Naruto Senpei knows something about Senjutsu, I think it's a way to block out the negative, maddening effects completely. Oh? He's quite the curious one, Akano chuckled softly, moving a piece. The redhead leaned back, are you planning on asking him to help? It would do you a lot of good? I already did, the white-haired Nekosho replied, he needs to ask permission from someone before he can give away answers. Rias looked towards the door, half wondering if the blonde was listening in on them now, it seemed that the Uzumaki enjoyed being sneaky in that way, even if he had a pretty loud and brash personality. I am curious as to who he answers to, she wasn't aware that he only answered to them when concerning Senjutsu, and other than that he was his own person, Uzumaki is a mystery to all of us, but hopefully not a potential threat. Akano let out another devilish smile, not considering the blonde to be a threat, he is strong for a human, no? And those whiskers are cute too, I say had be a lot of fun, Rias nearly rolled her eyes at her best friend's sadistic grin, no doubt thinking of very unorthodox things to do to Naruto. Check. And did you find anything else Kaneko? Your guess was right again, Naruto Senpei uses chakra in the ways he described in his book, so he says, despite it being fiction, it is still our only lead to figuring out who he is, Rias nodded, she suspected as much, that Naruto had some different uses of chakra, though the truth of the book surprised her, if only she knew. Akano gave a small sigh before her face brightened up again, you always win, she said, but I guess it's to be expected, her black king was practically surrounded, only one move away from checkmate, at this point, Akano knew she should just give up on trying to beat the Gremory heir at chess, seriously, it was hopeless. Keep a look out tonight when you're not taking contracts, Rias said, standing up, we need to find out who this Uzumaki Naruto is before the week is up, no one shows up out of the blue as a famous author, yet has no past addresses, 
parents, or contacts, unless they have something to hide. Of course, bucko, was Aquino's reply while Kaneko dipped her head in acknowledgement. This week was going to be long, it was the next day after school when Issei was approached by his two perverted friends. Matsuda and Motohama, throughout the day, Issei had his mind on two. No three, things, the first was the beautifully large tits and magnificent body of Rias Gremory. Okay, he was admiring far more girls than just Rias, but he at least hid it better now, and he wasn't peeking either, it didn't count if nobody caught you, so for all the school knew, Issei wasn't acting as perverted, the second, and much more serious, was what his sacred gear was and what it actually did, for a few hours, he tried to remain cross with Naruto for completely forgetting about it, yet it was hard to hate the charismatic blonde, after all, Issei would have died without his help. Finally was how the hell he was supposed to swap places with something by moving his hands in fancy ways. Though Naruto had taught him the hand signs yesterday, Issei felt as if he get a better idea of why the blonde did some of the stuff he did, not even Naruto knew exactly how it worked, and when Issei asked if it was even safe, the blonde replied with a smirk to not leave an arm behind, with that came the thought of where the hell the logs that his temporary sensei had swapped with came from, the brunette vaguely recalled something about praising the ramen gods, but it all just went right over his head. With all of this on his mind on top of the recent events, Issei may have forgotten that he should talk to his friends, hey, Issei, where the hell have you been? Matsuda asked, you didn't get to see my new copy of. Sorry, sorry, he interrupted quickly, glancing at the girls that just passed by, damn, less than a week ago he would have screamed the name of the porn series as loud as he wanted, followed by a proclamation to be the harem king, he had no idea that these events were changing him this much. Motohama gave him a funny look, what have you been doing? We saw the kendo club completely naked without you, what is more important than that? Issei shrugged, a thoughtful frown on his face, I guess I was distracted, Naruto did give me some amazing literature though, he pulled the Icha Icha book out of his pocket, showing the other two the cover page. Uzumaki Naruto? Motohama wondered aloud, the prankster author? They saw him earlier, when Issei was talking about his forgotten girlfriend, and since then they hadn't really liked him, once they found out that he was a prankster through the grapevine, the two of the perverted trio blamed him for all the times that their clothes ended up painted with the word pervert on them last year, no one knew who it was that did it, but many of the students remembered it dearly as the first sign of the perverted trio's emergence. He's not that bad, sure he pulls your leg a bit, but this gift is absolutely heavenly. Issei opened to a random page and showed them the somewhat erotic story, not only does it have everything from sex to boobs, it also has a plot, whoever wrote this deserves a Nobel Prize. The two giggled perversely at the page Issei was showing, Matsuda spoke up, tonight, you should bring that over and we can all read it together, unless you have another copy? Issei frowned again, this time legitimately, I have something to do tonight, and this is the only copy, I could lend it to you for a day I guess, Matsuda snatched it up, flipping through the pages quickly. Awesome. See you later Issei. The two giggled and ran out of the school, making a beeline for Motohama's house since it was the closest. They seem different than I remember, or am I the one that's too different to properly enjoy breasts like I used to? He was actually worried that he wasn't as open of a pervert as before, sure the quality would never disappear, but had been so focused on other things, like saving his own life, that he hadn't gotten the chance to admire the feminine form enough. With a sigh, he walked out of the school, deciding to go for a small run to get to the park, it wasn't far away, no more than five minutes at a brisk jog, after a few snide comments from Naruto about his fitness, or lack thereof, the brunette had taken to running instead of biking, hell, at top speed maybe he could run as fast as he used to bike, Naruto could outrun him backwards without chakra to enhance his speed, so Issei had a long way to go. As distracted as he was, he hardly noticed that he was paying no attention to his surroundings, he looked to his right as a large bus went then turned around, only to find himself crashing into Anoth person, they both tumbled to the ground and papers spilled everywhere. Only then did he get a look at the person he hit, more specifically, she was a hot blonde nun with bright green eyes who was sitting on her ass with her legs spread a little as a result of falling, a silvery cross hung from a small chain around her neck in front of a grey robe with a white hood, he had an up-close view of her panties too, coupled with a decent set of knockers, and Issei instantly knew that he was going to help her up. Hey are you alright? He managed, eyes still roaming her body, realizing she was still on the ground, he held out a hand. T thank you, she replied in a cute voice, letting him pull her up, hey Anyo. Whatever she was trying to say, Issei was too busy staring at her to hear it properly, the white veil on her head had fallen off and was caught in the wind, quickly he released her hand and snatched it up faster than he should have been able to before. Thank you very much, 
she repeated cheerfully, placing the veil back on her head. Don't worry, it was nothing, ah. I need to continue the conversation somehow. He panicked, trying to think up something really quick, have you seen a spiky blonde haired teen pass by here? That wasn't the right thing to say. I don't kn, I think I lost my way, she replied shyly. Issei reigned in his perverted thoughts for a moment, if he helped this girl, his day would feel even more complete. Where are you going? The girl seemed somewhat surprised that anyone would bother to help, but she quickly put her shy, cute, and happy smile back on. The church, oh, the one in the valley that no one uses. The brunette asked himself, hee hee, she's so cute, eh Anyo, could you show me? Issei nodded, oh my god, she asked me to help. I am in heaven. Why yeah. I am Hyodo Issei by the way, so you can call me Issei. The girl nodded, I am Asi Argento, but you can call me Asia. Thanks for watching.